Hey, party people! Well, welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer, and this week on the show, I am joined once again by my good friend Ash Cheshire for a game of Unfamiliar. Unfamiliar is a game about wizard familiars. It is a game about being summoned by wizards to help them with tasks who have become separated from their magical patron until one day they receive a signal, a feeling, an indication on the wind that their wizard, the being that summoned them, that brought them into this world, has died. They must then venture into the underworld for their final confrontation with the being that created them before making the decision to bring their wizard back to life or leave them in the underworld, severing their bond forever. It's a beautiful, brilliant game. I really loved playing it. I thought the questions and prompts were cool. The way that it is played, drawing information out of tarot cards and other sort of visual inspiration prompts is really, it's kind of my favorite style of play at this point. And so like, I was extremely excited to get into it. And I really think that you're going to love the game that we played. And I really think you should check out the game itself. It is currently on Kickstarter. It has fully funded. Go pick up your copy. Get the game because I think it is truly beautiful and like the art of it is amazing and I think it's going to create create a really cool finished product. You can find a link to the unfamiliar Kickstarter in the show notes. Now, I don't actually have any housekeeping or anything to do like that, so why don't we go ahead and just dive in and I will throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, you, Jeremy. This week, I am so, so excited to be welcoming back to the show Ash Cheshire. Ash? Thank you so much for coming back on Party of One. Thank you so much for having me back. It's it's I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's a delight. I am so so excited. I was excited when you emailed me. I was excited when we learned about the game. I am I am thrilled. I'm excited to to be playing the game. And speaking of the game that we are playing, uh, why don't you take a moment to let our lovely listeners at home know about what we are playing this week, as well as anything else you've got going on that you might want them to know about? Sure. Thank you. So today I'm going to be uh, facilitating both of us playing uh, Unfamiliar together. It is a game of loyalty and magic in the underworld. So we'll be playing, uh, we'll each be telling our own stories about a a magical creature who was taken uh, as a bonded familiar by a magician. Uh, And the magician then left for reasons unknown. And um, the magical creature just kind of had to figure things out at that point. Um, But just before the game begins, right at the beginning of the story, the magical creature has been summoned into the underworld and they can feel their magician tugging at them and they realize that their magician has just died. So we're going to be telling the story of uh, two magical creatures in their own separate stories um, who are journeying through the underworld and receiving the memories of their life back. They've had all of their memories taken from them. Um, But as they move through the underworld seeking their magician, Uh, We will each tell their story, uh, reclaiming those memories, and then supporting each other's stories as the the curious spirits of the underworld who whisper questions to help those memories become more robust. That's sick. That's sick as hell. What a good, what a good, I'm, I'm hype. I, something that I've come to appreciate having heard so many of these games is I love, first off, I love a good tagline and a game of loyalty and magic in the underworld top tier tagline i'm Thank immediately you. i'm immediately in i'm immediately ready to go um the pitch is good this has all of the things that i love in a good game in it i could not be more excited i have my tarot deck in front of me i am ready to uh in, to meet some familiars and so why don't we go ahead and kick things off uh walk us through uh the process and we will uh let's play let's play a game beautiful so i actually brought um two different decks with me to kind of um complement whichever deck you bought you brought along can you tell me a little bit about the the style of the imagery uh if you want to share the name of the deck you're using i can uh, absolutely um so i own i own a single tarot deck it is a tarot deck that is incredibly close to my heart and has an incredible amount of emotion that'll be perfect for this it is the it is the philly tarot deck is the name of it and all of the all of the artwork on it is styled after the city of philadelphia various wow. uh notable historical and celebrity figures from the city and you know iconography that is that is specific to to philly so i believe it is the suit of wands is the suit of cheesesteaks it is uh this is gonna be amazing it is it is it is one of my favorite objects and i uh i bought it about a year maybe like a, a year and a half ago i definitely bought it during quarantine because like i and, and the, the honest reason was because i had played enough games with tarot decks for party of one that i was like i should own my own tarot deck 
Nice. And when I started to like, like look around, I was like, I want to find one that is personal and meaningful to me. And the truth is like, I love the city outside of my window so much that I, I, there was, there was really no question. And the, 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 the drawings in it are lovely and wonderful. And all of them are so fun. And all of the major arcana being various Philadelphia celebrities and like local figures and, multiple you know two two very significant sports mascots may or may not appear during I was, play i was gonna ask about the orange one uh the <laughs> orange uh the do you, do you mean the devil card because uh it's the devil card and <gasps> it's great so perfect it's very good i love it and so that is the deck that i am using today incredible that's gonna tell an amazing story okay I'm excited. so with that in mind i think um i'm going to use the uh it's called the Fantod Pack. And mm-hmm. it is a, a deck of tarot-like cards that was uh, illustrated and designed by Edward Gorey. Oh, and wonderful. The I cards love it. are extremely non-traditional. It's not the standard um, tarot, rider weight tarot imagery. Um, but I have every time I've used this to play this game, it has told an incredible story. So I'm I excited. Think these I'm so two excited. Will be really fun together. Beautiful. Yeah, I think there's going to be a really specific energy that comes about when clashing, you know, gory illustrations with with, with Philadelphia iconography. Yeah. I think this yeah, is going to be good. Be really neat. This is going to be a really interesting uh, story that's going to develop, and I could not be more excited. Beautiful. All right, so. We'll get started. Uh, I've given you a bit of the the prologue pitch, mm-hmm. um, so I'll just um, I'll just do a little bit of narration, and I'll do this uh, ahead of each card. And what we'll do is, um, you know, I'll I'll sort of set the mood a little bit with some of the the cards intro narration, and it will tell us um, what the memory is that we are um, that we're going to be telling based on the card that we draw. And so each round you draw a card, uh, take a look at the imagery. I will uh, read the, the little um, narration piece. And then uh, we will each take a turn. And on your turn, um, you'll just tell the story of that memory inspired by the imagery. And it can be as, as robust as you want. Uh, it can also be very simple because once mm-hmm. you have told the, the beginning part of your story, um, I will act as the spirits, the curious spirits of the underworld, who will ask you one or two questions. Got it. And then, um, and then you'll take a turn. Uh, so then I'll narrate my story, and you'll be the spirits of the underworld for me. And we'll just go through card by card that way. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. All right. So, um, we, you are a magical creature. The first card that we'll draw is going to inspire the creation of the magical creature character so go ahead and uh do you want to tell your story first or would you like me to start as the creature first do you have a preference um i don't have a preference do you have a preference i do not then i'll, um, then I'll go ahead and be the first creature because i've already beautiful. got a card i've got a card face down in front of me and i'm dying Wonderful. to know what it is all right go ahead and turn that up and take a look at it this is i i have it in front of me this is i believe the six of well, it's the six of giant clothespins, and that's okay. what I'm going to go with. It's got some, it's got some parking authority figures on bikes holding up these a very large, um, like sculpted uh, clothespins. They're an art exhibit that is around the city, or they're like an art nice. piece that is around the city. So there are these large sculpted clothespins. Uh, there's a reef hanging on one of them, and there are parking authority figures, sort of like carrying them, almost like heralding them through the city. That's amazing. All right. So as you're looking at that card, conjure in your imagination the image and characteristics of your magical creature and one or two details of their life before the magician arrived. And go ahead and tell us that that story, that memory. I was functional. I was I was I was not, but I was functional. I was. Mm -hmm. I was I was many and I was functional but I was not at the same time I was objects I was a collection of bits and bobbles and and pieces and some clothes pins some uh, a, a a washboard I was objects that filled a home I I and 
as the first kind of glimmers. My This is the earliest memory that I have, or at least the earliest memory that I can grasp, because as any object can, as any sent, as any newly sentient object will tell you, we have memories deep and rich that are simply beyond, slightly beyond our grasp, but speak to something deep within ourselves that is incomprehensible. I was the objects of a home that merely wanted to manage itself. I mm-hmm. was, I, I remember as those glimmers of, of, of sentience, of sapience, of, of life, of memory, of vision flooded in and of unison as all these objects became one creature. Our, our, I, I remember feeling a tremendous level of supportiveness, of support as feeling like there is something to being a functional object. And that is something that perhaps a person might not immediately grasp. And that is that to know without, to know with certainty that you are, that you have a purpose is an incredibly powerful thing. And to know that all of these sort of grand, beautiful purposes have come together to support and to give to give that feeling to another so that they can merely they can cast off these sorts of jobs and and focus on what they feel their purpose is and truly get to embody that is an incredibly gratifying validating and satisfying feeling to know that like i am my hands are clothespins my purpose is to hold clothes on a, on a line and when i am doing that those clothes are drying so someone doesn't have to dry those clothes and they can go do their research That's what I do, and that's what I'm good at, and that is an incredibly powerful feeling is to say, this is, this is, I am this, this is what I do, and to have that spread across a washboard and a broom and some clothespins and three pots and a pan, like, to be able to say, like, these are, each piece of me has a a role is a powerful thing, and that is my earliest memory is a feeling of satisfaction and of purpose. Wow. So as, as your, um, as your creature regains that memory of self, uh, the, the underworld swirls around you a bit in, in curious mist and you can just barely make out a little whispering voice asking you, what was your favorite use of your magical abilities? (sighs) I am I am looking at my I'm looking at the card again and there's this one little detail on it that really stands out to me. Mm-hmm. And that is that on one of the clothespins there's a wreath. Like a decorative wreath is on top of one of the clothespins and so I feel that the answer is that about once a year on a on a, on a, on a major holiday my clothespins would be taken off of the line and placed on decorative string that had been pinned to a wall and instead of holding clothes i would hold decorations and that sense that i was ushering in this special moment in the life of my magician was like an incredibly beautiful thing right like we were celebrating together even as i you know my purpose had changed and for this one moment my purpose had shifted into celebrating this special moment and as I felt that joy in the air, that joy bled back into me, and it was this very kind of communal feeling. And so my my favorite purpose was in that one that one holiday season every year, my clothespins would decorate and my pots and pan would create holiday dishes and we would fill the space, this this space that had been very functional before that, we would fill it with this sort of glee and magic and wonder. And it felt special. You know, it was, it it was a moment where it, it felt, it's hard to describe other than to say, like, it is very rare when you're, when you, when your very being is built with a purpose to have something that does not have a clear and defined kind of end point and to merely Mm -hmm. say, this is a moment of celebration, but it was special. Who did you serve before the magician? (sighs) Many people. Every part of me served someone else. None of us, none of, none of me, none of me, none of me was new. 
which is a very fascinating feeling. Like I said, there are memories that are beyond, like just beyond my reach, like a word that's on the tip of your tongue. But there are faces and people that while the purpose didn't change, my clothespins still held clothes, my pots and pans made dinner. I am full of faces and smiles and satisfaction mm. of people just people people that some you know their purposes their purposes changed and who they were is vast and varied but a, a, a wide swath of people used me for a purpose and that felt great that felt good yeah are there any other details of your life before that you would like to add before uh, before we move deeper into the underworld? I don't think so. I think that gives me a good picture of my magical nice. creature. Beautiful. All right. Then I will take my turn for the first right. card. And my first card is... Oh, interesting. So this card is titled The Plant, and it's a picture of... It's almost like a it's it's um it's like a side view and you can see down under the ground you can see the roots and then the long leaves it has a, a very long sort of slender leaves and then a, a flower that's kind of drooping down that actually as I look at it it mirrors the roots oh that's beautiful um, in that's a very really cool. interesting way that's really cool so I I uh I was. I was a plant. I was a magical plant. And because I have this mirrored structure in my roots and in my petals, I can slowly and laboriously, but I can reroot myself. I can upend myself and move if I have to. It's not comfortable to do, but I can. Um, but primarily the gift that I have, uh, the, the magical ability that I have is, um, is one of, ah, I have a, a fragrance that my flower can, can, uh, produce, um, that, uh, creates, um, something between a dream and a memory for those mm. who smell it. And it will give them something that they need. They may not understand it, but it will give them some people have, have referred to them as visions or prophecies. I don't know about that. All I know is that it's meaningful to me to share this, this, um, this fragrance with people who come and seek it. I love it. Um, the underworld rustles and the mist swirls around you and plants like people have lineages where, where do your plants, where have your plants historically grown? What, where, where have your, where is, where, where, where do your plants call home and why is where you called home different from that? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every time one of us uproots ourselves, um, a small fragment is left behind in the soil. And if nurtured and taken care of, it can grow into another one of us. And I, my earliest memories are of being transplanted, uh, being in a pot and unable to move, unable to reroute myself. I had no additional soil around me. And so um, I actually don't know my lineage. I don't, mm. I, I know, um, I know from once, uh, once I was given a garden to live in, I learned how my children were born and assumed that that must be where I came from. But um, my earliest memory is, is of being in a pot and being um, separated from the earth. Mm. When you conjure these memories, these dreams, do you, do you share in them? Do you experience them or do you merely witness the effects of, of what, of the scent and, how does that how does either answer make you feel it is absolutely amazing and wonderful when people choose to share with me the visions mm. or the dreams mm -hmm. and memories that they have but i i give people their their choice of privacy 
I have felt sometimes as though perhaps if I exerted my will, I might be able to perceive some piece of it. I've even, I've even attempted to um, witness it, my own prophecies or visions or memories and dreams, but the fragrance doesn't seem to affect me in the same way that it does others. Mm. And that's all I've got. Beautiful. That's a great first round. Yeah, good first round. Okay, so this next card that you will draw, go ahead and draw a card for yourself. All right, I've got it in front of me. I'm going to flip it. We have, this is the card of temperance. This is, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is Philadelphia 76er, uh, Joel Embiid, the process, hashtag trust the process, uh, beautiful angel wings, uh, a, a, a sort of biblical shining light halo, Two wow. cheese steaks in hand, uh, in the water, like in 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 a meadow at a pond. It is a beautiful photo, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. So this is the meeting the magician card. So um, this card represents the first meeting you had with the magician. So in telling us this piece of the story, you can consider, you know, the magician and mm-hmm. the event of meeting them, as well as the thoughts and feelings of your magical creature. Hmm. Um, the vibe that I get, the memory that I have looking at the card and, and the, the iconography and the stories behind it and the card itself being temperance, the memory I have is one of patience and oneness, you know, a clothespin only really holds up clothes or holds or has, has one thing it does. And meeting the magician, we we felt very similar in that. They had a mission, a purpose. They they were a researcher, and research is a slow process. It is a process of patience. It is it is a process that you must trust. And together, you know, we I the we that is I, right? All the mm. the me that is all of my pieces. Yeah, sure. Felt very. Each of those has a purpose in the way that that my magician had a purpose, and there was a very oneness in that. It was a very my magical my magical I, my magical purpose in life was to was to fulfill all of the many purposes that I had, and my magician's purpose was to fulfill their own purpose and. We had a very good arrangement. We worked well together. It was a very good, it was a very good arrangement. And it was an arrangement of patience. It was a, it was an arrangement that lasted a long time because their work is slow and methodical and they are slow and methodical. And, you know, a watch pot never boils. My work was slow and methodical. So I picture a lot of long nights and slow uneventful weeks as we all worked away at the things that we worked on and it was the it was the feeling of contentedly working next to someone and not really necessarily speaking a lot but merely feeling the comfort of having someone else working in a space that is next to you for sure how did you initially reveal or introduce yourself to the magician scientifically Mm. it felt right Uh, it was a slow process because everything in our lives was a slow process and so it was starting a kettle and letting the kettle whistle when no one had started the kettle (laughs) and the magician uh he saw this and he went and he he tested it and you know there were a series of experiments and i could tell what he was trying to experiment towards and when his when his goal was to test if something was going to move without moving, he would catalog where something was and I would move it to say, <laughs> yes, this is moving. And, you know, we did a number of tests and it was a long, laborious process. And frankly, we loved it. Like it, it it's fun. It is fun to do that kind of methodical research and it is fun to do that kind of methodical process driven thing. And, you know. We it was a real moment of play for both of us to to kind of explore that together. 
Wow, that makes sense since uh, play and celebration um, seem to entice your magical creature. Mm-hmm. What what did you find unnerving about the magician when you first met him? <sighs> he there is a methodical approach uh, approach to matters beyond comprehension that is sometimes mortifying mm. this it, it is it, it really as as easy as it is as it is to describe it this way there is a hubris to saying i can understand things i can understand things that are scale that are at a scale beyond any human comprehension i can be the one to comprehend it and to approach that with such unwavering certainty to say i am mere i am the one that will that will crack that will crack the arcane code and will will understand all of this is at times more at times horrifying mhm all right very cool so i will draw a card meeting the magician the card i've drawn is called the waltzing mouse Mm. And it has a tiny mouse figure dancing on the top of a table that has a floor length tablecloth with like a ruffled edge. It's a little round table. It almost looks like a little stage. And the first time I met the magician, um, I was, I was still in that pot and the magician in a mouse form scampered up the side of the pot and was rustling through my leaves and messing up my, my soil and, and, you know, digging around and, and just being very, um, very disruptive and very, very close, closer than I was used to any, anyone getting to me. And, and I, I turned my, my flower head towards this sensation and sort of ruffled my, my leaves a little bit in indignation. I can move, you know, I can move a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the mouse looked up and, and started talking to me. And in almost as a reflex, I, I released some of that fragrance just to sort of, I don't know what I was trying to do. It, it was, it, like I said, it was sort of a reflex. It was just, it was just unconscious. And as soon as she got a little snoot full of that, she um, she just grinned and said, ah, I knew you were the one. And then scampered off. And when she came back, she wasn't in a mouse form anymore. She was she was a she was in a, a like a human form. And she picked up my pot and talked to me and sat and held me and I had never had anybody come back again before. And that was the first time I met her. Hmm. Hmm. In the time that the two of you spent together after that, did she favor the mouse form or the human form or did she take many forms? She could take all manner of forms, but the mouse form was one of her favorites, I remember now. She did. She spent she spent a fair time. She really enjoyed at the height of our time together. She enjoyed being in mouse form and curling up inside my blossom, sleeping inside the flower. Mm which astonished me. I didn't, I didn't think that anyone would want that much dream vision memory. It was, it was very unusual. I don't know if I have any further questions. Excellent. All right. Then the next card. So this, when you're ready with a card, Mm -hmm. this will be becoming the magician's familiar. This so is... this card represents the magician taking you as a familiar. You can um, consider the magician's actions to accomplish this, as well as how you responded internally and externally. This is an 
th- there are levels to why that this is a very interesting card. This is the lovers, or the, rather the kiss. It is the kiss, the the Rodan sculpture, the kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that is a very interesting card here. I, I think, I think literally and metaphorically, this was. I said that none of my parts were new. None of my, none of my, none of my, my, my many parts were new. I think when I was found by the magician, I was only a handful of pieces, maybe three or four that had begun to stir with life. And one of the first experiments that we did was finding out if things can be added to to me. And obviously it was a success. I can say that pretty confidently now. I can look at all of my many parts and be pretty confident that it was a success. And the result of that success was bliss it was i i had new purposes i had i had new drives and new capabilities and new things and new experiences new memories like i i was growing and and he was growing with me and he was learning new things about his craft and i was learning new things about the things that i could do and we <sighs> For all the the for all of the talk of magical processes and you know the possibilities of of becoming magically bonded to a magician and becoming a familiar through all these sorts of magical processes, the truth is, we became bonded together because I was the house that he lived in. I was the stuff around. Like we merely were two people that loved being with each other and loved living near each other, and that was simply a long comfort with one another and that was merely eventually i became i became the magician's familiar by simply time and time and love and patience Mm -hmm. it sounds like you gained quite a bit from this transition i'm curious what did you lose (sighs) direction Focus. Hmm. To be a clothespin is to have one thing. One job, one drive, one purpose, one being. Oh, sure. To be a clothespin, three pots, a pan, a vacuum cleaner, a broom. Like, to be all of these things is to have many purposes and many drives and many capabilities. But that meant becoming complex. That meant That meant life was interesting in the most positive and negative connotations of the word that's that's my only question okay that's really good all right i will draw a card here it is ah becoming the magician's familiar my card uh the title of this card is the blue dog and it's interesting because these cards are in black and white. So, um, you know, Edward Gorey. Mm-hmm. But there is a dog um, peering around. You can only see like the front half of the dog and uh, a door. And it's there's the it's so interesting. There's literally only a piece of the door showing and then the dog standing kind of behind and, and uh, you know, inside it. Um, so it's unclear if the door is opening or closing. But there's this blue dog here. When when I became the magician's familiar, she had come to visit me in my pot as usual. But she had come in human form, which was somewhat unusual. And this time, she picked me up again the way she had the very first time that we met. But she didn't put me down again. She carried me away with her. And she took me through a door into a a beautiful, small, walled garden. And she set me down, and I watched the first time I ever got to see her change her form. I watched as she changed into the form of a dog. And she used her forepaws to dig a hole in the center of the garden, just a little bit bigger than, than the dirt in my pot. And then she 
returned to the human form and came over and she transplanted me out of the pot and into the soil in the middle of this garden. And for the first time, I knew what it felt like for my roots to be able to expand, to move freely, to not hit the the inner edge of the pot. And it occurred to me for the first time that I could bend my head down and touch the soil with it. So she took you to this garden. She picked up you in, in your pot. What didn't she take and did she know that she had not taken it? What was what was left behind and did she know that she was leaving something of yours behind? She, when she picked up the pot, she didn't notice, or at least I didn't see her notice, that underneath it there had been a coin. And she left that there when she took me. Mm. What did the coin mean to you? I I knew it because it felt different against my roots through the, the drain hole of the pot. And it was it was a it was a curiosity to me more than anything else. It was something that felt a little different. It had uh, the the metallic taste against my roots was different than the terracotta of the pot, and it had a it had a if I say that it sang that that's a little too strong, but it it had a vibration to it. It had a a sonorance to it. And I'm ashamed to say I didn't really notice that it was gone for quite some time. Hmm. I was so excited about being taken, and um, I was so excited about being out of that pot. I it had never, you know, I I was distracted for a very long time. And I think that's my that's my last question. Beautiful. All right. All Draw right. Draw a card. All right for a shared triumph. Yes, indeed. So this represents a time when your assistance was necessary for the magician's triumphant success at some important effort. This is incredible. <laughs> so here's why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what the card is, and then I'm going to explain why this is incredible. Cool. So first off, this is the Ace of Wands. So it is a single, a single paper clip being held by a cloud, and the cloud has a hand extending from the cloud that is holding the paper clip. Oh, wow. Now, what is truly incredible about this is I have been trying my best not to look at the cards that I put in front of me before it is time to flip them. Sure. But last round I broke and I pulled, I, I flipped the card, I put the next one and I peeked and it was the Ace of Wands. So I said, no, we're not using this card. We're shuffling it back in the deck. <laughs> and I shuffled the deck and I've redraw. I have, I, the card came out the exact same card. Truly was meant to be. Your deck has a mind of its own. It does. It it was it was telling me this was the right option, and I think what it was was, you know, I I've said a bunch of times that a clothespin has one purpose, and that's to hold clothes. But that's not true. <laughs> it can hold anything. It is to hold, but it can hold anything. And so when my magician and his research came to a point where he had frantic notes and diagrams and and ritual sketches and blueprints and it felt like he was truly close to this cosmic level of understanding if only he could map out everything around him and see how it all lined up and truly truly follow the through line from ritual to ritual to ritual to ritual to ritual, to ritual i was there and it was not the purpose that I was made for. I was not holding clothes, but clothespin can hold paper, can hold a book open, can hold an object about as well as it can hold a sheet. And I held up the diagrams and the books and the 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 scrolls and the 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 crystal shards. I held these things up with my clothespins and I watched him dance from from sheet to sheet as he as he fi as he captured that through line and it was a a moment of getting to witness someone finally achieve the level of triumph that they've been chasing after and knowing that it was there because you were able to support them and you gave them the, the support that they needed to accomplish the thing that they needed to feel whole. 
And I saw that in that moment and it was it was the greatest I could hold. I could hold 10,000 sheets and never feel that level of triumph. What um what reward did the magician give you for this this assistance? The greatest holiday feast that has ever been thrown. Ugh. We had guests. We had guests. We never have guests. <laughs> we had guests and we had games and we had decorations. We had I held paintings. I held paintings. Um, and I got to oversee all of this, and it it sounds like I'm describing a life of work, and that is not entirely accurate, because in these moments, I could drop a painting and no one would notice. And, like, I wasn't really working. I was there for the festivity. I was celebrating. I was putting on a show. I was entertaining. And... Everyone would stand around the things that I was holding and point and talk about how wonderful they were. And I was like, yeah, I'm showing this to you. I'm here. You're looking at me and saying these wonderful things. And I'm sharing this art with you. And it was beautiful. And it was a a, a true, a true holid piece of holiday magic. Wow. That does sound triumphant. Yeah, I don't have any other questions. Okay. That's an incredible memory. Then draw your next card. All right. A shared triumph. So this card is titled The Yellow Bird. And it is a very gory-esque bird, long and thin with no visible wings, flying over some uh, bare branches. And again, black and white, but the yellow bird. Mm -hmm. So a triumph that my magician and I once shared was there was a, there was a young woman who kept coming to my magician. I could hear from the garden, especially after I transplanted myself a couple of times to be a little closer to the window. I could often hear the conversations that my magician would have with people that would come to see her. And there was one young woman in particular who came back a few times saying that, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that she, she knew she needed something, but she wasn't sure what. And the magician would talk to her, make her tea, sit and, and often people would come to the magician with their problems and they would leave thinking that they had received magic when really what they had gotten was someone who was willing to sit and listen to them. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, my magician didn't even need to use her magic. All she needed to do was make a cup of tea, make one for the other person, sit and listen and ask them a few questions. And they would leave feeling like they had talked to someone incredibly wise who was magically empowered with the ability to, but it, you know, it was, it was them. And the more she would try to tell people this, of course, the more they believed that it was her magic that was doing it and that she was just humble. It was one of the things that I loved about her. Mm. But mm. this particular woman was really struggling and the talking and the tea was not enough. And so one, one afternoon, my magician invited this woman to come back into the garden and see me. And I was ecstatic. I was so excited. This was the first time that I had been given an opportunity to not just be my magician's plant, but also to be truly her familiar and her assistant. And so I raised myself up, I lifted my head high, and I breathed out some of the sweetest essences I could. And as the young woman stooped to admire the blossom and smell the fragrance, I saw her eyes light in a way that I had never seen anyone else do when they received a dream memory from me. And she stood up. She stood up tall and she turned to the magician and she said, I need to fly. 
And in that moment, this woman became the yellow bird and she lifted into the sky and flew. And it was, it was astonishing. She had remembered that she could do this. And I was able to help her remember that. That's incredible. I have a question. And um, I, the spirits of the underworld are swirling around and they're kind of at the kind of edges of, of your of your stories. At, and which is a way to say that I'm asking a question that is a little adjacent to the story sure. that you've been telling. What does color mean to you? What, the, so many of the stories that you have shared are tied to color. The yellow bird, the blue dog, they, mm. the sort of color is, an, is, uh, is such a prominent and important detail. What, yeah. what does color mean to your familiar? What, what, what role does that fill in your memories? Why is that such a prominent thing in your memories? You know, for plants, color is communication and mm-hmm. color is, um, it's survival. My, my body uses chlorophyll to feed me from the sun green. My blossom uses color to attract pollinators as well as, um, the people who I, I am able to assist with my fragrance. Color is to plants. Color is, is a vibration. It's a, Uh, It's a frequency that we communicate on. And so often my perceptions of the world are going to, the best way I can translate the way that I perceive is to describe them in color. Incredible. Um, My other question, did you ever see the yellow bird again? Yes. Yes, we did. I don't remember it clearly yet, but I'm, I'm certain that she returned. Hmm. Good to know. Um, that those are my questions. So I am I am ready to draw my next card. All right, let's do it. Card All right, four, separation. Yep. So this one, this is the card that represents the moment that you realized that your magician had left you behind. I am drawing so many wand cards today, and it's a That's very really interesting. It's, it's very interesting. The deck is really the deck is on theme today. Uh, this is the this is the four of wands, and it is uh four clothespins holding up a gigantic flower display. It Ooh. is uh there are flowers everywhere. It is it is around a forest. It is a gigantic flower display, and they are being held up by these four clothespins. <sighs> It was the holidays, and it was the the realization that all of this decoration that I had put up, there was no one to see it, and there was it was this it was this this <sighs> there was a panic at first, something had happened, something had gone wrong, everything looked in order though, and then there was a a fear and a betrayal and a sadness. That we had been left behind, we had been abandoned, we had been betrayed. But the lab was intact. The notes were there. Everything was there. If we had been abandoned, if there had been some other call, things would have been taken, but there was nothing missing. And so, as strange as it sounds, the feeling that we have, the memory that we have, is of lighting every candle in the house. And ringing bells as loud, ringing all of the the various bells and baubles as loud as we could, not in a, not in a signal of distress, but in a cry of bittersweet encouragement. Our magician had gone to the next phase of their journey, their experiment. The process had taken them to the next place, and we needed to tell them a few things. We needed to tell them that we were encouraging them and that we were proud of them and that we would, we were hopeful that when they would come home, they would come home to us and that we would miss them, but that we were proud of them. And so we rang and we shined and we glowed and 
and we were hopeful. We, I, I wanted him to do well. I was sad that I wasn't going to see it, but I, I wanted to know that I wanted him to know that he had been called to some greater purpose and that I was there support. I was going to hold down the, hold down the house quite literally while he did that. And that if, if a time came when he came home triumphant or otherwise, there would be, there would be soup on the stove and there would be candles and there would be a, there would be a little banner that said, welcome home. Did, did any of those friends, the ones who had come to the party or who maybe stopped by other times, did any of them ever check in on you? You know, they did periodically. Uh, there was a period where there were many of them. There was a hot second. They took down the decorations and they, they tore the house apart. And I kind of had to put it back together when they left. And then they came back later <laughs> and were very upset that the house had been put back together. It scared a lot of people. And frankly, they should have just, you know, done the study. But there was a period where they tore the house apart being like, he had to go somewhere. He's missing. We got to find him. And then I put the house back together. They came back and went, oh, my God, the house killed him. And frankly, that was a little insulting. And but, you know, there were people that would come by mourners, people that which I felt a little, I felt a little sad about seeing people mourning when I had this hope and this deep belief that magician was off on some great quest and some great job. So I tried to do comfort them and I would I would light some candles and there were moments where the mourners would see the candles spontaneously light and I could tell it gave them some comfort and that gave me a, a level of joy. It meant that it, there was a new purpose for me and that was for to help the people that were grieving give some level mm. of of comfort themselves. And how did you comfort yourself when you when your hope wavered? <sighs> The thing about is that they're meaningless in so, like they're arbitrary. Not that they're meaningless, <laughs> sure. but that they're arbitrary. Yeah. The only value that we that that we that people ascribe to like the only value the holidays have to people is the value that they ascribe. They look at a day on a calendar and they say, "This day is the day that we celebrate." Yeah. And the the look the card looking at the card and thinking about my journey and my familiar and who I am and my purposes. I celebrated. I put up like I put up flowers and I I I put up art pieces and again the people that come by did not appreciate them but <laughs> I celebrated. You know, if the only value that a, that a holiday has is looking at a day and saying we're celebrating today, I I celebrated a lot of days. I didn't have much else to do. If it if if making fun festive flower displays was to be my new purpose and Honestly, I made some pretty excellent flower displays. That's really, that's really beautiful. All right. I am going to draw a card. Oof. Okay. So this is, this card is titled the Ecorche, which um, is French for uh, flaying, being flayed. Mm. And the image is a a human form wearing a top hat standing on sort of mottled ground. And it is just a, um, the musculature is all that is showing on this human form. It wasn't, it wasn't a physical flaying, the separation, but it felt as though my petals and my, outer skin my my cellulose skin my leaves had been torn away and it had been it had been a day or so and i hadn't i hadn't been watered i hadn't i hadn't heard her and so i i moved myself even closer to the window and I tried to, I tried to sense inside the house and I just, I just couldn't find her. And I tried to remember the last time that I had seen her, but memory is, 
odd for plants. It's if it's more than a day or so, I, I'm I'm not great at keeping track. Sure. And I, I don't know I don't know how many days had gone by before I noticed. It was really the it was the discomfort and the thirst in dry soil that I think woke me up to the fact that I hadn't seen her in a while. I hadn't heard from her in a while. And um, yeah. That was that was the moment that I realized that she had left me behind. Did anyone come to take care of you? You know, you would have thought so. You would have thought that all of the people that the magician helped, that they would have maybe come and checked in on the house, watered the plants. It seems like the the only polite thing to do. But the only thing I could think was that everyone else must either be seeing her or forgotten about her as well, because no one, no one came. And it, yeah, I, I eventually it rained and that was good. I transplanted myself over closer to the, the gutter of the house so that I could get more water that way. And that was good. I discovered that I was tougher than I thought I was. And that I suppose was good. Did you make any effort to take care of the house or did you focus solely on taking care of yourself? You know, you asking is the first time I've even considered that the house would have needed taking care of. It didn't, it didn't occur to me like that. I didn't have, I didn't have any sense. I'd never been inside the house. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was in there. Only that that was, I guess I thought of it as her pot, that that was where she had transplanted herself was into that house. And I actually, I, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever really understood why she had a house and why mm. she didn't just stay out in the garden with me. But it's probably a, a plant thing. <laughs> I don't know if I have any other questions. Cool. All right. Our next card, the last memory. Yes. So go ahead and draw a card. This is and... the eight. This is the eight of tokens. Ooh. We have a runner sitting on a bench, preparing to travel, getting lacing up their shoes, and we have eight subway tokens floating in the air around them. So this, yeah, this is the last memory before you were summoned to the underworld. So this can um, this can tell a little bit of the story of um, how things went. You know how long the magician was gone. Um, any, yeah, any details about that final moment, the moment that you realized that your magician had died? Nothing in us was new. Nothing in me was new. So I couldn't have been surprised when, when people were finally willing to go in the house, which took a while on account of all of the decorations coming up and down. People finally came and they took some of me. And it was jarring at first. Everything that I had, all of me, had always been in one place, at least as long as I had memories, as long as I was perceiving things. And yet, as time went on, my memory, the, the memory that I have is, it's fragmented. It's, it's flashes of imagery. It's a coffee pot in, a, in an accountant's office. It's brooms sweeping a schoolhouse. It's I'm in so many places. And it's different. It's not what it was. I'm not the whole of me is not working towards one thing, but I'm in a lot of places doing a lot of things for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. it's not the worst way to live. And, and then I get that feeling. The coffee pot boiled and. The clothespins dropped the dropped the, the 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 pen drawings that they were holding, and the all of me just froze. We all dropped our purpose in an instant, and we left. Moving is not something we were particularly skilled at. It's not something we'd ever really done before. But I I had a purpose, and I had to I had to bring all of me together because. 
that feeling of after after being after being in eight pieces for so long that feeling of of one of being one having one purpose had come back and i had to chase after it with everything that i had where did you find yourself when you reassembled <sighs> people imagine that when you say the phrase the gates of the underworld that that is like a metaphorical thing. Hmm. People imagine that that can't be a literal place. But those of us who know, know a little better. And we came together. There were some bushes and, and like on just on the other side of the very literal gate to the underworld. It must have it must have given the spirits a shock to just see what what, what looked like a pile of junk <laughs> laying on the other side of the gates of the underworld. But there we were and we we gathered together and we pushed our way inside as not a collection of objects. But I, I, I made my way inside as one singular being. And in that moment, I realized it was the first time that I felt like a singular being and not like a collection of objects and purposes and desires. This was me, and I was making my purpose known. No more questions. Okay. All right. So this card is titled The Burning Head, and that's exactly what it is. It is okay. it is a head floating in maybe smoke or clouds, and it is a flame. You know, I um I made I made things comfortable for myself in the garden. I found a corner that stayed mostly shaded but was still near where the soil was was uh more regularly um watered from either runoff or uh, drainage from the road outside. People didn't come and visit me, but birds and flowers and bees and butterflies were all there. I had plenty of plants to commune with, animals to entertain, bees to make tipsy, which was always fun. But then one afternoon, I, I had almost forgotten about her. Suddenly her face appeared in a shaft of sunlight, just shining brilliantly in the center of the garden. And it was all of her faces. It was, it was the human face, the mouse face, the dog face, the bird face, the snake face. And I watched and remembered suddenly why I was in this garden, why I'd been given this, this new place, and who was missing. And just as I turned my head towards this vision and attempted to reach out in some way, it evaporated. And I felt the world melt away. I felt a tugging at my roots. And it, it was like, it was like darkness falling all at once. And I slipped down under the surface and felt myself invert my roots becoming my head as they emerged into what I now know is the underworld here. How did you mentioned two things that I, I the underworld wants to ask you about mm -hmm. in one question. And I think I only have this one question. You mentioned that birds had come to visit you, and you mentioned you had a memory of the yellow bird coming to visit you. How, when, does that memory come a little clearer now? Do you have the memory of the yellow bird coming to visit you as you readied yourself for the underworld? Oh, yes. Yes, I do remember now. The yellow bird came and visited just before the magician disappeared. And she came back again just before the magician died. 
and both times she came and sat in the garden with me. And she didn't say anything, but it felt like it felt like we didn't need to say anything. Like we could just be in companionable silence together. And she I'm not sure if this was what she was intending to communicate to me, but the message that I received from her was just a reminder that she had had the ability to fly her entire life, and it just took someone else reminding her. But I brushed it off. I'm I'm a plant. I you know I I don't I don't do things like that. And so I would I would smile and nod companionably and leave things quiet the way she seemed to want them. But it felt like it felt like that was what she was trying to. Well, to be completely honest, it felt like she was bragging a little bit. Hmm. But maybe I misunderstood her. Hmm. I think that's my only question. All right. Draw your next card. All right. And this is the magician. Yes. So. So this is your magician in their underworld form. They may not look the way you remembered them in life, but you recognize them instantly. With their arrival, your memory is restored, and you now recall the ruling principles of the underworld, principles the magician themselves taught you. First, your magician must answer you truthfully here. Second, you are not dead, but you were summoned from life above, which means that you may return there at any time of your own free will. You may bring the magician back with you if you so choose, but they cannot return on their own. And finally, you know that if you return to life above without the magician, your bond to them will break. So tell me about your magician's underworld form. And then I'll give the next instruction. So the card that I've drawn, and I feel like this is actually pretty literally what my magician's final form looks like. It is the three of, uh, the three of quills, they are three quill pens that are stabbing through a heart. And it looks like the ink oh, that they've wow. drawn is from is from that heart in front of a stormy sky. And I think that is what my magician's underworld form is. It is notes and papers and pens floating in the air and drawing blood from a beating heart and using mm-hmm. that to scribble on papers and using that to write down truths that they should not have and things that they were not meant to know and desperately scribbling these notes, all of these pens and quill pens and ink pens, just scrawling notes on every wall, every surface, papers upon papers floating through the air. And that is what my magician looks like in the underworld. Wow. All right. So I, as the underworld... I'm going to be the voice of your magician speaking mm-hmm. from their truest heart. And you magical creature, you may ask three questions up to three of your magician and they must answer you honestly. <sighs> Did you find what you were looking for? Yes. And no, what I found was that the pursuit is what entices me the most. And so what I what I was looking for was more things to look for. Are you done searching? I am I am done with leaving things behind in order to search. Why didn't you tell me you were leaving? I I left somewhat impulsively and it didn't occur to me until I was rather far away that it would have been right and kind and caring for me to tell you I should have come back as soon as I realized and I am sorry and those are my three questions all right so I'm gonna have you hold on to there's one last piece but we'll do that together after uh after I do a card draw for my magician. Okay. All right. So, wow. So the, the card that I drew is titled the bundle and it is what a, what a good card draw. It is, it is a bundle. It is a cloth wrapped form tied with ropes sitting on a table. 
And so my magician, I've sought all the way through the underworld here to find you. You must have summoned me here. And so my first question is, why? Why did you summon me? Because coming to the underworld meant losing my memories. And the only person that I've ever known powerful enough to give those memories back after they've been lost to an ether arcane to something greater, the one thing that I held on to was that that was your gift and that was a gift that you could allow me to reconnect with, find find the me in the midst of all of this bundle of, of me's that I am currently. Mm-hmm. Do you wish to come back to life above? <sighs> I do. I liked it there. I liked... I liked talking to people. I liked sitting with you. I felt like as much as I, I as, as easy an answer it would be to say I have more work to do, I liked the parts where I wasn't working and I feel like I didn't take enough of them. Will you leave me again? It would be comforting to say no, but it would be against the laws of the underworld. It is the nature of our arrangement in life above that one of us will leave the other in time. It might be you, it might be me, but it is impossible to truly believe that even in the event that this magical event occurs and we are given another chance together, one of us is going to leave the other. We, we leave, we, we entered the underworld alone, no matter how much we want that not to be the case. Thank you for your honesty. Of course. All right. So the final thing, the final choice that both of our magical creatures must make is whether they will stay here with the magician in the underworld, bring the magician back, or break their bond. What decision does your magical creature make? I am going to bring back my magician. As am I. All right. And that's the end of the game. And that's game. Wow. What an experience. (laughs) That was beautiful. Thank you. That was incredible. Yeah. That was really, really fun and really um, just lots of emotion and meaning. Yeah, that was cool. I loved it. That was great. Thank you so much for coming on the show and playing this with me. That was great absolutely thank you so much oh my absolute pleasure this was a, a a truly incredible experience i could not be more happy about it wonderful well thank you so much for playing it with me thank you so much for coming on the show real quick before we wrap up where can people find you and your work online absolutely um the best place to find me is probably on twitter uh my um general account is at the ash cheshire uh, I also have a game specific account at Ashcan Games, uh, slogan Ashcan Games, and so can you. And um, right now we're actually uh, in the midst of a um, a Kickstarter for Unfamiliar. We're doing a special edition. I've gotten some other artists together, and we're making a physical copy. There's going to be a spread cloth that you can set your cards on um, that uh, comes along with. Um, cards to guide each uh, of the steps in the story and you play it with a tarot card in deck of your own, you know, and, uh, and then we have a, a, there might be some more uh, currently it's sold out, but there might be some additional of a a top tier level, which includes talismans because this new edition of the game, we didn't play with it today um, because I'm keeping it kind of secret for the special edition. But um, there's an additional uh, element of play where uh, you have a talisman that you empower at each stage of the story um, to become a, uh, a little token that you get to keep with you of self-assuredness and sovereignty. Incredible. I, I cannot wait to learn to, to, to learn more about the talisman. Uh, did like the rules of the game. I'm excited about it. I was excited when you mentioned Thank it today. You. Uh, it's extremely cool. And this game rips. I'm so excited about it. I, I cannot wait to check out the Kickstarter and to get people to check oh, out the Kickstarter. Thank you so uh, much. I'm, I'm all kinds of excited about it. Uh, thank you so much for playing with me. This was uh, an incredible, breathtaking experience. And for now, I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Cool. Take a future me.
Thanks, Past Me. And thanks again to Ash for coming onto the show. That game was absolutely beautiful from beginning to end. I could not be happier with it. Be sure to pick up your own copy of Unfamiliar. Go back to Kickstarter, get your copy. Uh, the Kickstarter has already funded, so there's no chance of you not getting your game. Go get it, you know, get bring this beautiful, magical world into your life. Um, you will be very, very happy that you did. And be sure to follow Ash on Twitter at the Ash Cheshire or at Ash Can Games. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review or a pod chaser review or telling somebody that you like the show on social media or just telling a friend you like the show like in a conversation. I don't know. If you're just like having a conversation with someone and podcasts come up, go, hey, I really like this podcast called Party of One. I think you would enjoy it. That helps new people find the show, and frankly, I appreciate knowing that people are doing that, so I'm going to assume that you're doing that and say I really appreciate it. You can also join our Discord community at bit.ly slash partyofonediscord, support the show financially at patreon.com slash jeffstormer or ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer, or visit our merch store at bit.ly slash partyofonemerch. And if you're looking to hear even more podcast goodness from me, you can check out All My Fantasy Children, the character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast on the One Shot Podcast Network that is powered by you. Every week on IMFC, my best friend Aaron Katanosai and I take a listener-submitted prompt, we spin it into an original fantasy character, and we populate a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday-ish at oneshotpodcast.com. Party of One is produced and edited, as always, by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers, and the Party of One logo is by Evan Rowland. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates coming onto the show as a guest or about press coverage of the show, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And, I mean, I guess that's it. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. 